Hi everybody, it's Shauna here with Katabi. Um, today we're going to be working on a Christmas wreath. Um, so I was going to um, do a step by step for you. And um, behind the scenes today, I have my daughter Sarah here helping out. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> um, so she'll be helping me a little bit as we go. Um, so I want to show you um, the steps that I'm doing on this one. Um, this one is actually going to be a gingerbread theme. I absolutely love this one. Um, it actually comes, I have a matching ribbon that, oops, upside down, a matching ribbon that matches the little gingerbread boy and girl really well. Um, so I really love this ribbon. Um, I do have similar kits available on my Etsy shop. Um, if the gingerbread is not available, I do have like Candy Cane Lane. There's a couple of other Christmas themed ones. Um, if you haven't ever seen or heard of Katabi before, um, what I do is I put together wreath kits for generally for some newbies or people who are new to wreath making um, to really give them everything that they need to make a wreath in one box uh, so that they don't have to worry about the bits and pieces. Um, this is not a kit in particular. I do have kits similar to this, um, but this one here, really because I love gingerbread, um, and I really wanted to do this one. Um, so let's get started. Um, so to begin with, I have a roll of um, the jute snowball mesh, and I cut 18 pieces that are 20 inches long. Um, I did that one, and then I also have a, oops, dropping everything, um, I have a red with the foil edge, um, the, the edge striped um, that has red, white, and green. Um, so I have, again, there was 18 pieces. This one, I cut them in 10 inch lengths. And to cut the mesh, I just use my rotary cutter and measure them all out. And um, so this one, let me set to the side. And I have a, this one I'm doing um, a larger bow on. Um, and I have a two and a half inch red and white polka dot. The two and a half inch um, gingerbread print. <clears throat> been dropping these today this one here is just a um, red with white swirls in it it's glittered um, this one is two and a half inches as well this one is a red and white um, candy glitter I love this one this was just a one and a half inch this is a red and green glittered one and a half inch I don't think I could do Christmas without doing glitter. <clears throat> this one here has the um, natural and red stripe and white glittered, um, and it also has the snowball edge on it. This one's a one and a half inch. Thank you. Okay, so to do um, on this one, what I'm going to do is a ruffle with my natural and snowball, and I'm going to add a curl in my red foiled mesh and I'm going to do that all at one time. I know that generally you can, you know, a lot of people will, they'll do their one set of mesh, they'll go through and apply it to the entire wreath and then they'll go back and add anything else. Um, for this one in particular I'm just going to try and kill two birds with one stone and see how it goes. Um, so, and I have a 15 inch pencil wreath form. So these come, they have 18 twist ties on them. These are also um, in the kits. So I'm just gonna kind of open this one out. I'm gonna start on my bottom row and then work my way up. So I'm gonna take my first cut on this one. Now to do a basic ruffle, if you lay it down and you just wanna start in the middle and gather all the way across. And for a moment, I'm going to use one of my clips to hold that for me. And I'm going to grab a red one. And these are cut in 10 inches. And I am just going to do one curl. And I would say, I mean, it's probably the size of a half dollar. You know, by the time I get my thumb and index finger around it. Um, so you don't want it too tight. Um, you still want that curl shape in there. 
So I'm going to take my ruffle, put it in my first twist tie, and then I'm going to take my curl cut side down. So whatever raw edge you have, you want that kind of facing into your ruffle um, so that it's not facing outward and getting snagged on anything. And then I'm going to tie that in. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm going to keep repeating so this is kind of what it looks like at this point. I don't know if you can see that very well. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing all the way around. I do like this snowball mesh, but it makes a mess. <laughs> looks like it's been snowing in, in here. Most of the time, if you've ever seen me do wreaths before, um, I do a lot of the cruffle uh, because it just seems the effect that I'm going to get by doing a ruffle and a curl, I can do the same thing with the cruffle or the woodland ridge um, method of doing it. I can get the same effect. Um, but this one here, I, in particular, I wanted the two different mesh. I wanted the natural and I wanted the red um, with the stripe on it. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. Again, remember, cut side down. It reduces fraying by doing that. Making sure you're... And you don't want them to smush each other. Kind of want them butted up against each other. Yeah, stray one here. It's snowing. You want to do the curl and then just hand it to me? Good job. I don't know about you guys, it's July, and here we are. You know, I've got already working on Christmas. Um, and it just seems strange. It's so hot outside working on Christmas, but my favorite time of year, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love Christmas. That's why I wanted to do this one in particular was. <clears throat> you can probably go a little bit tighter on that sweater. My daughter, since she's been home from school, um, they've been out for... She's almost four months now um, with since this COVID um, situation. And my daughter has really been helping me out. Um, she not only helps with, you know, the kit business and she's been learning how to make bows. She's been, she's been learning a lot. This one, she's, she's done a good job. She even did a um, wreath rail. You know, I showed her how I walked her through the steps on how to do a wreath rail. And so she did that. She did a fantastic job. So right now she's rolling the curls for me. So again, she's just rolling them in a curl. This is the 10 inch red. She's rolling them up um, a little over a half dollar size. I know our schools were talking about their, this year they're not going back to school, they're going to be all online. Um, and we're in Southern California and it's gonna take some getting used to. You know, everybody's been eager to get back out there and start doing things again and those things have just gotten out of control. <clears throat> 
I'd love to send my kids back to school, but I'd rather them be safe and healthy than get something. But I will say, since having them home and not being in school, the amount of colds that we don't have and, you know, from all the other kids and their germs and their nastiness. So my kids have been really healthy since they've been home. Couple more on this bottom row, and we'll move over to the top. Now, some of my um, kits come with um, either one roll of mesh, sometimes two, um, and I've had people ask me questions about doing a the wreath base with just one roll of mesh and I do it all the time. I rarely use, this is one of those occasions where I'm using two um, different mesh, um, but generally speaking, um, I most of my wreath bases, I do a cruffle method. I cut 18 pieces, 20 inches long, and I do my cruffles with one roll of mesh. Um, I have also, used one roll of mesh to just do, um, I would cut 36 of the 10 inch pieces and do two sets of curls in each one all the way around. Um, so it is, to me, um, I can get just as, as full of a base, a wreath base with just that one roll of mesh I don't need to have two unless I really want the color from the second one. Um, sometimes, like even if I'm doing a, if I have 21 inch mesh and I'm doing a poof method all the way around, I may come back and add a curl or something to it um, to give it some more definition and um, body all the way around. But you do not have to have two rolls of mesh to do a nice and full wreath base. Um, especially even if you're doing like a pancake style, those really you only need one as well because you don't want um, the extra body there. But my typical wreath using one roll of mesh and doing what I had just said, um, usually my wreath bases or my, my completed wreaths usually come out to about 27 inches wide um, and usually about eight to nine inches deep. Um, so I have a very full wreath. It's not, it's not skimpy at all. Okay, so we have our first row all the way around with our natural and our red. And now we're gonna move to the inner layer here. Let me move this out of the way. Sorry. <clears throat> and so on my inside, on the outside I had 10. On the inside we're gonna have eight. What a mess. I mean, it's just like working with glitter. You know, I'll look down and just everything, even me, I'm covered in glitter. I'll have it on my nose and my hair and my eyebrows or whatever. Um, same thing with this snowdrift mesh. It is a little bit softer to work with, I gotta say, than just the regular jute. Jute usually gives my hands a really hard time. I would suggest, I always do it before I <clears throat> start working with the mesh, is I put on a lot of lotion, especially if I'm working with jute, because that stuff can be so dry and itchy on the skin. <clears throat> I'm sorry guys, my voice is doing something today. Doing a good job, huh? Now my twist ties. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna add ribbon to these twist ties and everything. Um, I will say I don't, I don't cut them. 
Um, some people prefer to just leave them out, and we could on this one. They're red. We could just leave them sticking up if we wanted to. Um, I personally tuck mine. Once I am done with all of my ribbon tails and everything, I go back and I tuck my twist ties down into the frame or hide it behind the mesh. <clears throat> I just personally don't like them sticking out, but everybody's different. And that's one of the great things about our kits. Um, all of our kits generally come with, you get your reframe, your um, the sign, the mesh, and generally four rolls of ribbon. Um, and I do not, I do not pre-cut them. Um, meaning I don't cut, you know, all your tails for you or only give you X amount of ribbon or mesh um, because everybody is different in how they want to do it. And so I really want you to have as much of the supplies as you can. Um, if you like a really full bow um, and you need a lot of ribbon, you want all 10 yards of that ribbon. You don't want just three yards enough to get you through doing some tails. Um, so... Um, you have more than enough supplies. A lot of times I have a lot of leftover ribbon and things like that for another project or um, sometimes we'll do matching. So like if it's a wreath, maybe a matching um, centerpiece or um, lantern swag, something like that, um, that all coordinates. couple more. Two more I think and then we'll be done with this and we can get out our beautiful ribbon. The other part I love with Christmas, especially working on Christmas wreaths, is that I can add in all these extras and the ornaments and things like that. And you can the rest of the year too, depending on what you're working on. Um, but I really love Christmas ornaments. I love them. I love the color and all the glitter. And Okay. So, here is our wreath base where we are at this point, okay? And um, I had somebody ask me, I'm about to add our sign. I'm gonna add our sign first. Um, the other day, um, somebody had asked how they can stop their sign from sinking into the mesh. Um, and it looks like it's really pulled through there. Chances are that that's probably, so I attach my, <coughs> And these are done with the cable mounts and um, pipe cleaners, and I have one in each corner. Um, and I do put some Gorilla Super Glue on there as well, just to make sure. Um, but when you're at attaching these, make sure, usually if your sign is pulling down into your mesh and it's smashing it, you've just pulled this way too tight. Um, chances are, either if you need to, you can either get a longer pipe cleaner, um, you may attach two if you need to. Um, if you feel like you've, it's just too short and you're pulling it all the way down. Uh, but that's generally what it is. If you're, if it's smashing down into there, you've pulled it too tight and you got to figure out where you want your sign to go. So you see how easy this, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see if I can, um, bend this frame just a little bit to give me more of a oval shape than just a round shape 
uh, because I want to put this sign kind of, I don't want it straight. I'm going to put it at an angle right over the center and then that's how I'm going to attach it. I'm going to go down in there with my pipe cleaners. Just reach up through the back, find your pipe cleaner. Generally, I will make sure it's in position before I tighten it too much. And again, the more you tighten, the more it's going to smash your mesh. in my way here. Okay, let me check where I'm in it. I'm doing all four corners the same way. And the pipe cleaner that's in the back, I just, any excess that from once I've twisted it, I just tuck it back up into that frame. One more. So I have that in there. It's not going anywhere at all. And I can just make sure my mesh everywhere is where I want it. Okay. So you can see our sign in there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through and add my tails um, with the exception of um, two, probably one here and one here. Um, well, we'll see. Yeah, I would say one at the top, one at the bottom. I'm going to, once I add my tails, I'm going to add a bow both at the top and the bottom, kind of at angles. Um, so it would kind of be the bottom left-hand side, top right-hand side. Um, so I am going to leave a um, tail here, or I mean leave a tie open where I want to add that bow. And then I'll go ahead and add my tails. So I have already pre-cut all of my ribbon. Um, actually, the the bow I'm going to use six different ribbons for, um, but the tails I'm only going to use four of those six. So I have pre-cut each of them, and I use. Let me show you. Is this the right one? Yeah. Um, this is a ribbon tail board. Um, this one comes from Hot Mesh Mom, um, and it's marked with different measurements. So I have an 11, 12, 13, and 14 inch ribbon tail boards. So on this side here would be 13, this side is 14. And basically all you do is wrap your ribbon around however many tails that you want, and then you can cut it off. So I went ahead and did that um, with all of my ribbon, and then I also dovetailed the ends of each. And all you do is fold your ribbon in half and cut from the non-wired edge over to the wired edge, okay? So I have pre-done that I, with the four ribbons. I have four of each one, so it gives me 16. Um, and we're going to go through and do our bottom section first so I can see where I'm at for our top. And I'm just going to start with my first one. And I'm taking a two and a half inch and a one and a half inch and putting those together. I'm going to fold it in half. And right where I folded it in half, I'm going to scrunch that neatly together. And I kind of make a little, I guess it would be V, a V shape out of it when I attach it. Okay, so I'm going to start in the bottom row. 
I'm going to untwist the tie that has mesh in it and then add my ribbon and retwist it. And then for me, I'm going to tuck my ties in there. Now I will go back and separate out my ribbon. And what I mean by that is, so over here, I have my first ribbon tail. And what I mean by separate is I will pull them apart in the directions that I want them. Usually I do that at the end once I can see where my bow is laying. Um, usually I just do it all at one time at that point um, and separate. So for right now I'm just going to keep adding them all the way around. Find my tie. Now if you... Um, so as we put the mesh in and we close the twist tie, if when you go to add your ribbon, if you don't untie it to add in your ribbon and you just add on top of where you've already twisted, your tail is going to be sticking out further. I hope that makes sense. Um, some people will also say that, um, or that I've had people ask me about their tails before that sometimes they put them in and they're sticking up straight like this and you can barely see any of the tail. Um, generally, that is because either your tails are too short, you've cut this piece too short, or you have tightened that down in there so far um, and too tight into the frame. I hope that makes sense. Um, generally, it's your tails are too short, or sometimes it's a combination of both. Um, so I would suggest a longer tail. Like I said, I usually will use a 14 inch tail. I didn't touch that one. Um, and using a pencil frame, there is a difference in when you're using, say you have one, um, you've done it yourself with pipe cleaners. Um, there is a difference in how tight you can get your ribbon tails in. So I'm just alternating which pattern I am using all the way around. And I am tucking in my ties as I go. I love this gingerbread ribbon. It's just too stinking cute. It matches it perfectly. more here on the bottom. Oh, I really miscalculated that one. Oh, I did it. I know why. Um, I was going to say, I originally, because I cut four sets of tails um, for each one, because I was going to do my, t I was going to do this one a little bit different with a side bow. Um, and I changed my mind because I wanted two bows on it. So, I just have to cut some more tails. Usually the more bows I do, and I tend to do more bows than tails, um, and when I do the bows, I like to do generally free, um, and I don't need as many tails when I do that, so. Okay, so where we are so far, and I've added tails the majority of the way, all the way around the bottom, okay? 
and I'm going to switch gears for just a minute. Bear with me. So I pre-made one bow. And I'm going to do the other one with you so you can see how I do it. Um, but this is the first bow that I did. Um, this one is not going to be my focal bow. Um, this one is going to go on the bottom. So I'm going to go, I'll go ahead and attach it. Have that one ready to go. And... I'll show you guys how I attach that in just a minute. And when you're attaching your bow, see if you can see this up close, and I'm going to move this down off my sign, but um, when you pull on this, when you're attaching it, if you pull so hard that it sinks down in and your bow starts collapsing on itself, you've gotten it way too tight. Um, and you want to make sure your bow is nice and full. Um, and actually, I need to move this one down. This way. Yeah. Um, you don't want it to start collapsing on itself. Or as Scott would say, you don't want it to pucker. All right, so I have that one in there and I'll show you how I attach mine when I do my other bow. <clears throat> okay, so I use, I dropped it. Um, I'll use yours. Um, I use Easy Bow Maker. And like I said, on this one, I'm going to use um, six different ribbons and I use um, the Bow Dabber wire. So even though I'm using Easy Bow, I use Bow Dabber wire. I usually cut off about um, 25 inches or so. Enough for me to take my thread or my string, double it over, and on my Easy Bow Maker, between the pegs, I slide it in, kind of flip it over, and just kind of twist it underneath enough to stay out of my way. Okay? So I'm going to start this bow with this um, red and white polka dot. Make sure my scissors. Um, and I'm going to start by dovetailing. And this bow, I want to be up top. I really want that to be my focal point bow. Um, so I'm going to do, on this one, I'm doing about a 7-inch tail. And I'm going to gather and twist. So I have 7 inches. Now I'm going to make my first loop 6 inches. So I just hold my hand down on the ribbon to the 6-inch mark. Slide it through the pit because you want the non-printed side, the ugly side facing up. I'm gonna hold my hand again, roughly at six, slide it down. I'm gonna twist. Now this particular bow that I'm doing, I'm doing three loops. So I'm doing one, two, and just, that's all. I'm doing one on one side, two on the other, and I'm gonna alternate back and forth, okay? So, I have two, this one I don't need to twist because this is the tail side. And I'm going to dovetail that. Okay, next is going to be my gingerbread. Now, as I make each layer, I'm getting just a tad bit smaller. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing with my tail. So I'm going to go maybe six and a half inch tail. I'm going to gather, twist. Now this time I want my tail to be on this side, on my left, and then my loops are going to start on the other side. Okay. 
And like I said, I'm going just a tad bit smaller. So my first loop was six inches, so I'm going about five and a half. I'm gonna twist. That one's got a little big. Okay. One more time. Now I am going to hold on to this for a minute. Um, I'm going to add in um, an additional tail of the gingerbread print um, when I get further into the bow. I just wanna make sure that print is very visible. So this one I'm gonna do about a six inch tail. Now again, I'm starting on my right hand side, my tail. And this one's probably going to be about five inch loop. Again, just getting a tad bit smaller each, each ribbon. This is some stiff ribbon. Let's get it. I tend to dovetail as I go, that way I don't have to trim up my bow later. It just works out better for me. Okay, I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna do my other tail now. So I'm gonna pull, um, I would say, how much is that? About 14 inches. I'm just cutting a 14 inch piece. I'm going to dovetail it. And I'm just going to add that piece in. Let me find the center. I'm going to add that piece in right there. I just wanted that little bit extra of the gingerbread print in my tails. All right, I'm going to move to this candy print. Now this one will probably be, uh, this is probably uh, close to six inch, five and a half to six inch tail. And I'm going to start on my left on this one. And all I'm comparing it to is the loop below it to make sure it's staying a little bit smaller. And I'm comparing my left to my right to make sure I'm straight. Okay. And dead tail. Two more. This fantastic glitter. I love glitter. So this one, my tail is going to be on my right. I'm just alternating. Every time I, I change a ribbon, I'm alternating which direction. This ribbon doesn't want to stay between my pegs. Let me out! This 
one just wants to climb right out of my bow maker. The more, um, the more layers that you do and the higher, you know, it's just like if you were making a rag bow, I mean, pretty soon you're way up here. They want to climb on out. This ribbon's more obedient. Okay, we're going to start on the left this time. Once I've gotten all my layers in, the bow jabber wire that I had to put underneath, I'm going to pull that up, and the side that has the loop from where we folded it, I'm going to put that between my fingers, and the other end, I'm going to slip through there, just make a slip knot, and I'm going to pull. And I want to pull pretty well before I take it out of my pegs so that I don't lose my stack. Okay. Once I have it out, I'm going to hold it between my fingers and I'm really going to pull on this bow dabber wire. Um, you can really pull on that and it's not going to break. It's one of the reasons I love that bow dabber wire. And then we're going to twist to the back and tie it off. I just do a double knot in the back. Then this is what I use to attach to my wreath. So I use my wire that I feed down in there to attach it. Okay. So we have our stacked bow at this point, kind of lopsided, um, and we're going to fluff that out. So I generally just start the bottom and start pulling my loops and my tails. I want to make sure I got a tail going in the opposite direction. Cute little gingerbread. Now with the gingerbread, I have two sets of tails in there, so I gotta make sure to point them in different ways. This is a very fun and funky bow. Maybe it's our gingerbread. Let's get them over here. <clears throat> Almost there. Now we have our bow and I don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. Um, if I need to shorten any of my tails, I can. Um, usually I will get it on the wreath where it's going to go before I um, trim it up or before I finish fluffing it out. Okay. So, move this aside. And I will have to do some more tails here in a minute, but let me get this one on so we can see where we are. So this one I'm wanting to go in the opposite corner. I don't want I don't want my bows to be straight up and down. I kind of want them at an angle to each other. Um, so I'm putting this one in the top right hand corner. I think it's my right. Or to you it might be left. I don't know. Okay. So I'm gonna pull that down, pull that wire down under there to tie it off. Okay. 
So I am pulling on it. I want to make sure it's in there pretty well. But again, like you, like um, I said earlier, you don't want to pull it so tight that the bow is collapsing on itself or puckering. Okay, so bow is in, both bows, and now I need to look at um, my tail, so let's see if you can see that. So we have one bow here, one bow down below, and I need to finish out my tails that I miscalculated before. So I need one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Let me count that again, just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do seven just to be sure. Um, and if I have extras, then so be it. So I need, I want to do my gingerbread. Um, my gingerbread, I'm going to do four of, and then my red and white, I'm going to do three of. So all I do is I hold my ribbon at the end of my board and I wrap once, two, and three, and then cut it there. And then I'm going to dovetail this. If you hear a rattling in the background, I have a stray animal under my bed. <laughs> I live in a zoo. Honestly, I do. I live in a zoo. I have animals and kids and pets and it's it's a wild animal park. Let me tell you. You ever want to come to San Diego Wild Animal Park? It's my house. So again, I'm doing three of this one. I try to have all this pre-cut beforehand and I had a plan and then I changed my mind and got to roll with it. I have some really pretty ornaments that I picked up at Hobby Lobby with the candy cane theme and so I knew I wanted to use them in there which speaking of which I should probably turn on the hot glue gun. Okay, now my gingerbread, um, this one I'm going to do four. One more. Glitter. We covered in glitter. I think 
skin. And I said turn on the hot glue gun and I forgot to do it. Not you, me. Okay, tail's done. Plug in the hot glue gun. Okay. All right, let's finish out these tails. So that one, gingerbread. And anywhere that I see an exposed tie, um, that's where I'm going to go back and add these. If my bow is covering it up, if my bow is covering it up, I'm not going to worry about it. too many of these left and I am again I'm tucking my um, my ties as I'm going okay so the bottom row is done the only thing that I try to pay attention to when I'm alternating is whatever's on the top row right over this I'm going to try to do the alternative um, the alternative ribbon Okay, so like on this one, I have the red and white swirl, so I'm going to try and do a gingerbread right above it, and then start alternating again, just so we don't have the same print right on top of each other. Don't be afraid to, if you put in your tails or your bow, however you want to do it, um, and it's looking off, don't be afraid to take that out and move it around. can't tell you how many times I've had to move a sign or move bows because it didn't look right to me. Okay, so on this side, <clears throat> might... I think I have one more. Let's see. Okay. Yes, right here. Now, a lot of times I would be done at this point, aside from separating out my tails, which I do once I have it hanging up and, and fluffing. Um, but today, we're going to go through and add some little baubles to it. Just going to fluff a little bit. 
The other thing I will, I I know I've said this before if you've watched me um, previously, is when you are doing your tails um, and you don't want them just sticking straight up, um, run your fingers over your ribbon and it just kind of helps give a soft little curl to it. Um, running your fingers under it and makes it look a lot softer um, and not so um, just flat and straight. You just want to kind of give it some some life all the way around. I tend to do my my tails all pointed outwards. That's me. That's just how I do it. Um, there are some people who prefer to make X's out of them and they spread them out more. Um, I just happen to like mine all pointed in an outward direction. Everybody's different. I smushed my bow somehow. Normally I, I do this part hanging once it's hanging and I can see it head on. Um, but before I start adding anything to it, I want to make sure we're, we're good. Okay. So, let me try to show you here. This is what I have so far. Geez, that's a big wreath. I can barely get it in there. Um, so this is where we are at this point. And I have a couple of little... Um, so I got these at Hobby Lobby that just add a little, add a little bit to it. Um, actually I might use some of the white. I have some of those. I also have stock. I have this candy pick. Actually I might use the candy pick, um, because I really love the little springy, it just gives it a little something extra. Um, a little snowflake on there, a little candies. So I'm gonna get my trusty bolt cutter. Some of these can be very difficult to cut. So all I'm going to do is separate these a little bit, flip them off. If I need to cut them down some more, I can. Let me get my hot glue down here. Okay, so one of the places that um, I like to, to put an ornament or something is in the center of a bow a lot of times. It just adds a little something extra to my bow. Um, so I think these ornaments might be a little too big for that, actually. Maybe not. Maybe a little red and white. Honey, what do you think? Red and white or white and or the white? I think white. White? What about one of both? So <laughs> what I'm saying is this one here, I have this ornament, and then I also have this ornament here. Um, so I might do one of both. Why why do the same? But it does have on it a little um, ribbon for hanging. So I'm going to cut those off real quick. I'm going to stick those right in the center. So all I'm going to do is right where I cut off that ribbon, I'm going to put some hot glue and I'm going to stick it right down in there. And I am very generous with my glue because I want it to stick. that one. I do use Gorilla Glue. This one's going to go right in here. Please be careful when using hot glue. It'll 
burn the bejeebas out of you. Yeah, that goes down. Okay, so we have some of the candies. These little coils, um, they do separate a little bit or pull apart, so you can kind of stick it up and out of there. Um, and I'm just going to find some random random places to kind of do want it up a little bit higher. I don't want it buried too, too down low. And I'm going to take my hot glue gun and glue that sucker in. And I am trying to, um, not just on my mesh, but where the tinsel tie was or where the pencil tie was, um, I am trying to wedge the end of this down there and then hot glue that. Not my mesh, not my ribbon. Um, now I did, obviously, when I did the center of the bow, I hot glued that right in there. But when I'm adding these little doohickeys, I'm trying to get down into one of those ties and then hot glue from that just to help secure it. Get another one here. And these you can bend and move around. Okay. Yeah, and I'm gonna find a couple of others just to add does not want to cooperate. So I know I want these candy, which matches the ribbon and um, the sign and everything. So I want to make sure those are noticeable. However, I'm not going to put it right on top of the ribbon that matches it. I'm going to use the other one. And again, I'm going to get that down there into that tie. Okay. And I need another one. Now I do also all along the sides. Um, I may not focus my energy on the sides, um, but as people are coming by or walking by the wreath, you are going to see the sides of it. So I don't want to neglect that. Um, we want to make sure it's pretty from all angles. Um, but I will use, I will probably use some of the other little ornaments um, to kind of fill some space there, not my, not the main ones. down in here. Once I'm sure that my hot glue is set, I may pull some of these ornaments a little bit and once I have it hanging um, so I can see it a little bit better. Whatever I do to one side, I try to do the other. So I have a couple more here. This one is just as cute as to be. I think I want this one coming out of the top. So I'm going to go right behind my bow where I've attached it and I'm going to get that one in there. This one, I need on the other side. Okay. One more, guys, and we will be all set.
I'm going to just bring that clean out of the way. Break room. Okay. Let that cool off a second. And I think we are about done. All right, let me see if I can stand back here and show you how my daughter's fighting with a glue string. <laughs> it's, just, it's like cobweb sometimes. It's kind of amusing. Um, let me sit, see if I can sit back and show you. And see if I can get far back. So this is the completed gingerbread wreath. And this one is going to measure 28 inches. And I'm sure that this one's probably at least nine, nine inches deep on this one. Okay. All right. I hope that, um, everybody has at least, you know, maybe learned something new. Um, if not, maybe, um, just seeing something pretty for Christmas, um, get your hopes, you know, pointed Get everybody in a good mood, get holiday cheer. Um, if there's ever anything that I can help you with, whether it's you're looking for something in particular, um, you have questions, please feel free. At any time, you can reach out to me on my Facebook Katabi page, that's K-I-T-O-B-B-Y, or on my Etsy, um, in my Etsy shop as well, you can message me there. Um, please feel free to check out um, the other tutorials and things like that that we have on our Facebook page. Um, as well as the wreath kits that I have available in my Etsy shop. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.